Yeah, 23 years old. I've been a pro for four years now. Feels like uh, feels like a while. I feel like I'm kind of a veteran, but I still feel like I have a, a long ways to go. Um, and I definitely have many years ahead of me. You know, this is kind of a sport that rewards longevity. And I see a lot of guys come into their prime in their late 20s, early 30s. And uh, dudes like Chris Horner, who race until they're 42. So not entirely sure that's going to be me, but uh, but we'll see. Um, I've been very happy with the way my career has gone. You know, I think I had really realistic expectations of myself coming into the pro ranks, and I knew, you know, this is a this is a professional sport, and and it's a sport that takes time to reach the top. And and uh, I've been able to to consistently progress every single year uh, in the training that I do in the winter, and and. Um, you know the the results. You know they don't necessarily show that that kind of growth, but I, uh, I I'm able to to, to mentally uh, think this way and and uh, and approach each year this way. And um, you know I, I can I can see the the changes just in my body uh, as I get older and as I get more mature. So um, no, I've racked up some results here and there, and and uh, and look forward to to some even bigger goals in the future. Yeah, well, cycling is not exactly a, a well, professional cycling is not exactly a, a normal sport in the sense that, uh, you know, you do the Tour de France, you're racing for three weeks at a time, your body changes uh, uh, drastically from the start of the race to the finish of the race. And, you know, having your body have that change in such a, such a short amount of time is not, not exactly a normal thing to do to yourself. So, uh, for sure, when you get more races in the legs, you see your body kind of adapt more and more to this, to the to the work that you put in. Um, whether that just be your, your musculature changing, uh, your body fat changing. Um, I personally didn't stop growing until I was a uh, third year professional, so until last year. I grew an inch when I was my, my first year pro, so it's kind of difficult to uh, race a bike professionally and be growing at the same time <laughs> but uh but that was just you know what my body was doing and I was just getting taller and and heavier so um I've ex I've, I've experienced un until this year um kind of I started I realized that I started to to sort of um kind of, you know I sort of started to stop seeing so much change uh from from the winter to the season um, and I think that's a lot due to the fact that I'm not growing anymore and, and I'm, I'm kind of stabilizing a bit throughout the season. Uh, but for sure, depending on whether it's the summer or the winter, you know, I'll be a couple kilos lighter, a couple kilos heavier. And it's just, you learn a lot about your body when you're uh, thinking about it all the time and uh, kind of looking down at your legs every day. Uh, and, you know, you see like, oh, today do I... Do I look skinny or <laughs> today am I bloated? Did I have too much pasta last night? Did I have not have enough carbohydrates yesterday? So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of inner dialogue that goes on. Uh, but um, it's just kind of part of the part of the job. Yeah, for sure, ever since I turned pro, I had a pretty clear idea of, of the kind of rider that I wanted to become. Um, I look at somebody like Fabian Cancellara, I've always kind of idolized him ever since I got into the sport, mainly because I saw myself as a similar rider, uh, somebody who excels in time trials, but is also a, a classic one-day rider. Um, so with that said, you know, races like Roubaix, Flanders, um, all the spring classics, Milan San Remo, um, on one spectrum and then on the other side of the spectrum you have uh, you know, the world championships in the time trial, the Olympics in the time trial. Um, so for me, with my size, uh, that's that's the most realistic goal that, that I can, you know, kind of head towards is, is that kind of rider, you know, a, a, a time trial specialist with a, a classic uh, love for the classics on the side. Um, and who knows, maybe one day I'll become more of a classic specialist with a love for time trialing on the side, but I don't think anybody really loves time trialing except for maybe British people. <laughs> I 
um, a, a block out most expectations that I feel from the outside. I mean, for sure, it's impossible not to feel outside expectations. I knew, uh, you know, when I, when I was a junior and I won the world championship time trial as a junior, people were saying, you know, oh, the next Lance Armstrong. And, and even at that age, I was like, that's the dumbest thing. You know, like the, we're completely different riders, completely different body types. There's no way that that's going to be. So, you know, I would read about that and, and people would say that, but I would never, you know, start to think in my head, oh, I need to win the Tour de France one day. I need to do this. I need to do that. Um, you know, it's for sure. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes, sometimes it's, uh, you know, I'm like, what do you want from me? But, uh, but for the most part, I'm, I'm able to, uh, to kind of quell that side of things and uh, stay really positive and, and realize that every year I've made forward progression and um, had a really nice uh, sling of results in 2012 with the pink jersey at the Giro and, and two fourth places at the Olympics. And I mean, I, something that helps me a lot is to look at the careers of, of somebody like Tom Boonen and, or uh, Fabian Cancellara and you know, Cancellara didn't win Roubaix for the first time until he was 25, um, and uh, didn't win Flanders I think until he was a couple of years after that. So uh, it's it's a race that that rewards that rewards patience, that rewards hard work, and um, you know I'm I'm definitely no Peter Sagan. He's somebody who has even bigger expectations than I do. Um, but I know in a couple of years from now, if not this year, next year. I'll be up there and, and uh, you know, starting to become more of a major player. But, you know, there's there's big steps that you have to make. Uh, it's sort of one in a million that comes out. And the first time they're like, hey, I'm here at the front of the race. Uh, so, yeah, I uh, have a lot of inner dialogue about this, but it's uh, it's it's mainly positive and And I'm, I'm excited now. I think Roubaix this weekend is is another really good chance for me to, to step up from, from last year and the year before. And um, it's a hard race as, as an American to, uh, to come in and, and, uh, and do well. And, you know, we're just not used to these kind of races. So uh, I've always loved it and I'm excited for it.